the best fruit for 2018. Here we go. Wow, it's a late write-in. It's not even listed. It's the coconut. You did it, coconut. Impossible. David. Football. Football, David. The Dave Damashek Football Program. Available on Apple Podcasts and at NFL.com slash DDFP. Now here's your host, Dave Damashek. Ancient history at this point, a full year ago, the announcement of the Shecky Award for the granddaddy of them all. Fruit of the year, like I say, that was last year. Now it's time to address this year, I guess more accurately, since we're a day late on this year's Shecky Awards, the 2019 Shecky Awards. We'll get through all of those, all the big ones, in case you're a newcomer, of course, before we make our wild card round picks and cover some NFL news, or after we take care of that, we will address the Game of Life, the Shecky Awards for 2019. As you know, the Academy Awards take care of movies. The Grammys take care of music. The Shecky Awards take care of everything else. So uh, There's a lot in between. Yeah, and you hear uh, over. we have uh, perhaps our most important uh, guy here in the studio to help evaluate these choices in advance and debate them perhaps a little bit. You hear his voice already. He is all the way from... London, England. He's our resident Miami Dolphins fan. He is Handsome Hank. That'll do. No, no. We got to play it the whole way out. Oh, really? No, you know what? You're That'll right. Do. Let's cut to the chase. What are we... I like what? how, Dave, you put the warning in there that I'm allowed to debate it just a little bit because I also understand... Well, it's a... It's fine to have a discussion, but ultimately, you know, well, they're, you saw they're the, called the Sheckies. They're not called the let's debate the Sheckies. Sure. And also, you know, you saw what happened on the uh, on the hundredth year list of right. the all time team. You see, you, you form a blue ribbon panel that extends beyond one. Things get muddy. Get muddy. Things get right. crazy. This is this is nice and clean. Yep. Straight line. That's what I mean. Damashek will tell you what gives uh, the. Uh, the blue ribbon panel of one and then behind the glass as he has faithfully been all through 2019 and now here on day two of 2020 there a new he is decade eddie that's right welcome i know he's now uh he's now 12 years of age this is his second decade it's eddie spaghetti yeah been here since november 2016 so 16 17 18 19 we're not going to 20 now let's not get into great. counting andrew raby handles that yeah. we we have much to get to yes a former shecky award winner himself is uh the uh the greatest citizen in the Czech republic for keeping tally of our red challenge flag picks which we're going to get to in just a second here for the quartet of beauties that we have awaiting our eyeballs and our hearts and otherwise on Saturday and Sunday and then we jump to, to and by my measure and I I say this every year and I'll say it again to you now handsome by my measure the wild card round weekend in the NFL is the second greatest weekend in all of sports preceded only or, or trumped only by the following weekend of NFL Dave action. you and I park our, um, our planes in the same hangar do we yes but not in the same exact tiny garage you you agree with me about the divisional round yeah, because some people like no, the this, wild card. This right? weekend is the second best weekend of the. Uh, the th actually, no, I go like volume, yes, mm -hmm. but this weekend will have at least one clunker. Whereas I am a big fan of the passion that's driven by title weekend, the championship game weekend. So divisional playoff, yeah. undoubtedly my favorite weekend of the year. Because and then Super Bowl, you know, is great as a standalone moment, but Super Bowl is a is a standalone moment. It's in a you know a, a neutral venue with mm. a lot of. Let's be honest, it's not like a, a place where a lot of the most hardcore. Of it's fans a lot of corporate show types. Of I, corporate I always types. remember Super Bowl Forty sitting there, and directly in front of me were three guys who had the uh, who had the um, button down with a tie with a Super Bowl Forty T shirt exactly. pulled over. Yeah, yeah. And one guy, I remember, these are grown up men sitting at the Super Bowl at the fifty yard line. By the way, I got right. uh, tickets from a pal. Yeah, this is a humble brag from you, but carry on. I know, but it will, uh, listen, it was nothing to do with me. I got uh, uh, somebody gave me their tickets, and so um, I sit sitting there, and these three guys sitting, taking up these all valuable, priceless seats for either Seahawks or Steelers fans on, on that Black night. Breeze. And they're and they, no, they were literally they the the I forget even which team it was punted the ball, and the other team downed it at the one. And the one guy asked the other, 
why are the fans of blank team cheering so loudly about that? What just happened? And like that, you you fail reaching the right. minimum standard. Your seat should go to right. someone who deserves it. There should be a quiz. You should not be allowed to just get a Super Bowl ticket. I'm you should you. have to pass some sort of, it's like, you know, citizenry in the U.S. of A. You know, you should have to ask some basic questions. Like show a picture of Drew Pearson and say, who is this? Who and is if this? you don't know, you're gone. Do? I agree. So that's why Spaghetti I would, would say fail that uh, that's why I would say the 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 championship games because I love the fact like that's for right. the team that's the home team and obviously for any fans that come with them. That's right. It is. It's it's the best game that times two. See. Yeah, you get it twice over you get it if you're twice a, over. an objective football exactly. fan sitting on your couch. But so a Sunday that Sunday afternoon also always falls just around my birthday, so I like uh, to enjoy um, that event. You know, I feel like it's it's sort of there for me. I would say that um, we should, uh, yeah, that it, it, and I've counseled people this before. If you ever are given a choice, go to the championship game or go to the Super Bowl. I've done both with my team and without. I advise go to the championship game. I would agree. Because if you get to be a part of the experience with 70,000 like-minded fans and you get to rejoice with your home team, or even if you're in enemy territory and you are one of the few rogues among all the broken-hearted fans, that's also a satisfying yeah. feeling as they go off into the Super Bowl two weeks later. Um, that anyhow, hasn't happened with my team. I just worry about whether I would cry publicly in either situation, win or lose. I I, 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 I have no compunction conceding that I got misty-eyed when I sat in January of 2006 and watched uh, a sophomore Ben Roethlisberger and company vanquish the mighty Denver Broncos. That's fine. Broncos. I'm more like that. The, the misty-eyed happiness is one thing, but the, the full-on sobbing because your team lost is uh, not a good look. I've been on both sides of it. I went into Heinz Field in – what would that have been? Two was that January of two thousand and nine? I guess. Yeah, I think yeah. so. That um, the Steelers and Ravens were the two best teams in football, and the Steelers eked one out with uh, Troy Polamalu putting the exclamation point yep. behind it, intercepting rookie Joe Flacco and running it into the end zone. But then I've also seen earlier in this millennium, I watched not once but twice the Patriots come in and break my heart. I still am not over either one of those. Like they say, the losses stick with you more than the uh, right. than the successes do. Anyhow, before we make the wild card picks here, and one, two more things. People always like to throw March Madness into the mix. It's fun. Not as good as the NFL playoffs. Let's let's keep it real. Um, some people go Masters weekend. Eh, fine. Worth a mention. Not, not rather, again, trumping go. football. And lastly, the former champion, I don't know if it was on a weekend, but whatever day it fell, January 1, when it was five bowl games, and all hash was settled. Just 10 teams, and by the end of the night, when you put your head on the pillow, yes, you dreaded the fact that you had to go back to school the next day, but on the on the bright side, you knew who number one was just about as much as you know it now after the 14 playoff. I don't think that the current uh, situation really resolves it any more clearly than the old way did when people would vote after you consume it with your eyes and then you sit down and you judge. Yeah, we all yep. know Nebraska's number one now, right? Anyhow, Eddie well, Spaghetti. That was normally how it turned out back then as well. Uh, we have much to get to here and not a ton of time to do it. We want to get in the Shecky Awards, of course. The What is it? The 27th annual, is that right? Or 28th annual? Uh, 20, it might be 28, might be 26. I'm not sure <laughs> either way. They've been around for a while, so we have to deal with that. But quickly, this head coaching carousel is spinning fast and furious. Handsome Hank. Yes. I'll start, I'll start us out here with a little conspiracy theorizing. Okay. I think that the reason that the Dallas Cowboys are dragging their feet at the time of this recording, they're now it's at the time of this recording. It's Thursday afternoon. Right. What's, they the, have, what's the issue here? Maybe by the time you hear Jason Carrot, ha okay, now they figured it out. He's going into the front you office. Just Jason Carrot. I, I didn't mean to. See, I got vegetables <laughs> That's a on great my brain. name. Jason Carrot. He's got red hair as well. It kind of fits. Has no one no ever called ever him Jason Carrot? Weird. Um, well, you just did, so congratulations. Okay. You got we're, now, we're now, you know, 48 hours away at, at most from kickoff of the Patriots game in Foxborough. Right. Here's my conspiracy theory. Go it's on. not just Josh McDaniels. I think the Giants are interested in Bill Belichick. I think he would be interested in at least hearing what they have to offer. The Dallas Cowboys, here's the common sort of thought about why no head coach who wants to be the architect as well as uh, to buy the groceries as well as cook the groceries, as, uh, as Belichick's pal Parcells once famously said. I think that 
the the it it's old um it's old info to say Jerry Jones runs everything there and why would Bill Belichick ever want to right. go down there that might have been true with Bill Parcells first of all Steven but it runs wasn't. it I mean he yeah he Parcells wouldn't have gone there if that was the case right but I Parcells still Parcells said that uh huh bef- long before he went to the Cowboys yeah that was with the Jets that was with the Jets so I think if or that was, was it with Parcells, the Patriots but the I don't Jets, know, with one way. of those teams but with if that was his philosophy. How would he have ever um, squared it away that he would go to the Cowboys and not be allowed to do what? Also, I think that, yes, as I've said ad nauseum, were I a multi-billionaire and I owned an NFL football team, you can be sure that I would uh, I would stick my nose into things all the time. And by the way, I don't even like that I just phrased it that way, playing ball with the way everybody else refers to it. You own the team. You're, You're allowed team. to do it's what you want with team it. To do what exactly? Of and, course, and, you and should do it. In some cases, that that's not a good. I think probably the, my bigger concern, if I was um, one of the candidates, and by the way, I'm not. Um, for a head coaching job and for the Cowboys. Let's see how things shake out. Frank Reich didn't know he was a candidate true, true, until true. some things shook out uh, weirdly. So, true. Um, but my my concern would not so much be Jerry wanting to do the grocery shopping. It would be more Jerry's commentary on my on my cuisine mm. and on the recipes that I've cooked up immediately after he's eaten them. If we have to continue this, but like immediately after a game, Jerry being caught by the Cowboys media and commenting on stuff is like that's the thing that would I think worry me about being part of that operation. Not so much that Jerry might tell me, "Hey, you got." I hear you. You got to have this guy. Fair, because that because he I does that it. more than most other NFL owners. And again, that's right. It's press prerogative. Con- he owned. Well, it's not even a press conference. He's walk. He seems to be walking around the building, trailed by media, and they. Um, very easily coax him into saying something about the the game or the performance he's just seen. Yeah, having to hear uh, after the fact uh, analysis from Jerry and or um, Chris Christie might be <laughs> exactly. enough to make uh, exactly. the, the 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 weak hearted among us not interested in the gig. But I do think that Jerry Jones at this point, what's it been twenty five years more since um, they were in the winner's circle might be more willing than ever to say, all right, the Jason Garrett era is now over. Now let's give it to let's bring Bill someone Belichick. Else in. And if it's Belichick, yeah. And it's the Dallas Cowboys and it's America's team. And as much as I've pushed back over the years about the idea that, like, boy, no more pressure than, uh, than being the quarterback of America's team or the head coach or otherwise, I think in the 21st century, all NFL gigs have pressure attached to it. Well, as actually – Probably at this point, a pa- the end of a Patriots dynasty where you know we think Brady's going to potentially be out of that building relatively soon. For Belichick, there's probably less pressure That's taking a Cowboys gig where the standards haven't been that high recently, let's be honest, and, and trying to turn that around than be expected to continue the greatness that he's had with the Patriots. Think so maybe right. that is the- I think if you are, I, again... We, we talked about with Willie McGinnis three, four weeks ago, and he disabused me of the idea that Brady might want to come to the Chargers because uh, Gazelle doesn't love L.A., but then again... Are we going with think, Gazelle now? I've heard this the Gazelle, I don't know. I either don't way. Know. Um, that, but either way, if it's a short-term gig, like four months out of his life, Tom Brady can also come out to L.A., sure. do that, and then yeah, yeah. retire and go about the rest of his life wherever they um, collectively decide to live out their lives with their kids. Anyhow... Um, yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think the Patriots thing is, if there is, you know, Josh McDaniels is sounding like he might go, do you want to be Belichick and run that if Brady goes? Well, and I, then, think if, I think if Belichick goes, I don't think Josh McDaniels goes. Emperor, well, maybe he stays, but Emperor has no clothes kind of logic. Do you want to be Bill Belichick and Brady leaves and you go 6-10? and 10? That would be bad, but like we keep talking about, do you, does Brady feel incented? I want to see what I can do on the outside. Does the right. Patriots fan want to see Belichick succeed without Brady, thereby knocking down uh, the the import of Brady in the dynasty versus Belichick? A lot of interesting can, can stuff. Can I take this down, though? I would, I, I would go to the Giants. If I were Belichick. That's if, what I was going to say. you could get it's like- Saquon and Danny Dimes and the young talent they have on offense, and then they have some pieces, some young pieces on defense, too, and you're – Allegedly, one of the, the great draft. defensive minds in history. Picking three or four? Where are we? Three, four. Then you right. Then you take Giants that the, gig. Giants are the fourth pick, and yeah. roughly like seventy million cap space too. I mean, you could you but, could load up that defense, and then you make yourself. Belichick is already regarded as the greatest coach. 
I mean, imagine if your third act as a head coach is, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, then I made the, the New York Giants good. Right. That, and then I walked off into the sunset. Yeah, I mean, and plus, Belichick obviously came out of there. He has too much respect, I think, for the Giants organization, whether it deserves it or not at this stage, you know, that far removed from them being one of the, the you know, the, the real big players in the league. But I think he has too much respect to take a job in the division from the Cowboys, the Giants' biggest rivals, when the Giants' job is potentially open to him as well. I, uh, don't think it, I don't think it comes down to money. I don't think it comes down to anything else. But I think if he goes into the Giants, he will be given absolutely everything that he could possibly want. Whereas, although you might make the case that the Cowboys is, you know, Jerry doesn't run things and whatever else, he knows he wouldn't have as much freedom there mm-hmm. as he would do with the Giants. Well, and that assumes that they move on from Gettleman. Exactly. But listen, yeah. I know I that's think, what I you think, think Spaghetti. Belichick comes through the door. That's I think, right. I think what just happened in Cleveland? Off, David Gettleman would be, would be packing his bag at the same moment that that um that yeah. Belichick and do you know what else spaghetti let me just tell you one more thing you, Gettleman's there yeah guess what Cleveland used to have a GM too in John Dorsey he's not there anymore here's another one for you ready for another bold prediction that's because Urban Meyer does not want to move up to take over the Cleveland Browns with John Dorsey in the way ergo we cleared out John Dorsey for you herb come on up back to the Buckeye State fella I don't think that the I Giants, think that's go that the Giants wouldn't trot out Gettleman for a press conference and publicly put a statement out saying he's going to stay as the GM. Oh, stop it. How if many times Belichick, have you seen this, Spaghetti? How many times have these things that, happened? That's the biggest coup. That would be the biggest know. coup in the NFL They're not going in, in terms of coaching in 10 years. I don't think Belichick has an option. It was the same. It came up years ago when, before they hired McAdoo. They're, I think they're fully set. I don't think Belichick's role. an option today, and I don't think it was when they when they trotted out David Gettleman for that press conference. But if if he becomes an option on Sunday when the if the Patriots lost that's the game this point. weekend and was like, hey – um, Mr. Mara, you know, yeah, but what, do you, what are you nips. thinking with your head coaching job? I promise you, even they, they wouldn't lose. think for a second about about ushering David Gettleman if, out. But if they lose and Brady's going to move on, wouldn't Belichick just stay? And kind no, of, why? We just explain then, why. It, then it's dangerous. He could he, then he risks being the emperor with no clothes. Oh yeah, no. I guess it was it was uh, the handsome guy at quarterback I, all this time. No, I think he's. I think he'll just he'll, he'd, he'd want to stay and win. In Maybe England without Brady to, to prove why? That. Well, there's a better situation. Uh, you want to prove that? You make the same point by going and winning in Dallas or with the Giants. I don't. I don't think a lot of times you always like see. Oh, there's a connection there. He used to like work there. It doesn't always come to fruition. I think there's a lot of ifs yeah. in the situation. So who do you think of, gets it? The Giants' job. Yeah. It's Matt Rule's job to be had. If he want, if he says yes today, or t- uh, which I guess he could today because they got whipped uh, last night by Georgia, he could say yes and then move on with the job, and it, that's over with. He he has ties there. He's young. He's brought back two uh, programs from the dead. I think that he is without a doubt the best option for the job. All right, and Lincoln Riley, and like I say, Urban Meyer. Don't be surprised if Herb winds up in Dallas or Cleveland. Watch those ones. But now let's get to the teams that are still relevant, aka the teams that will be playing on Wild Card Weekend and or awaiting um, the survivors of this first round to pay them a visit in the divisional round, the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Packers, and the Niners, all with their feet up watching things, a position of luxury to be sure. Handsome Hank, instead of just picking these games, do you want a bracket style? Or how do you, you want to go The whole about? playoffs. Yes. Why not? Well, don't, didn't uh, your your um, mates over in the NFL UK don't they are haven't they cooked? Yeah, up we have something styling? called the Super Bowl Challenge. If you yeah. if you um, live in the UK and you're listening to us or anywhere else in the world, unfortunately outside of the US, have a look. Go go to SuperBowlChallenge.co.uk in the UK, and then there are other URLs for other countries, and uh, you can you can predict your own. Your, your whole playoffs. Okay, so and let's win make prizes, our picks. By the way, Dave, win some pretty impressive prizes, including oh, really? things like tickets to London games next year and that kind of thing. What if we use a lightly used bottle of the hair pepper I used to fill in my flesh yarmulke? Yeah, you could sign that. Could that. Be, you could sign that. I'll sign it. Okay, for you. sure. All right. Yeah. Why don't you we want do that? that UK? I'll do it. Fine. You Fine. know what use you have for right. for those? I mean, but if that has value to you, okay, we'll yeah. do that. Fair so in mind let's. That Dave gets through two of those a day. Let's to make fill in the uh, the ever widening gap in his in his. Um, I don't know why we his needed to hear head. that. No, that's not true. It's not ever widening. Is it not? It's, no, it's just stabilized. Right? Oh, it's stabilized. It's stabilized really? right where it is. Now people say, why don't you get like uh, some some plugs back there to fill in the flesh yarmulke? Of course. Do people say that? People have asked me that right. question, and of course, the um, if you think it through, the practical answer is because then. 
I, you know, in the short term would have a nice full mane of hair with the with yeah, the flesh wanna... yamaka covered up, but then you assume what I'm never going to lose any more the hair. Rest of it. Then the rest of it would start to widen out. Then you'll just have that bit. Right. Then I have a hair island surrounded by a flesh moat. Right. And that's not good. That's, <laughs> that's even weird. Right. That's very strange. Even. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, let's get into it now. Let's get into the wild card round of the Red Challenge Flag Picks. Red Challenge Flag Picks. I didn't hear you there, Spaghetti. He was on. I got to yeah. watch the levels and stuff. I'm making sure. All right. Well, now you have to do it a cappella. Go. Yep. Red Challenge Flag Picks. Oh, you're no I've any always better. wondered who was the weak link. Whenever you hear it, you're like, there's someone who's not in tune there. And now we know. There's a lot there. going on back here. I'm like, I'm, I'm piling the Millennium Falcon here. So just letting you guys, <laughs> you guys do your thing. And I, I got under control. Did you see it, Spaghetti? Of course I did. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Did you? I, I'm a pretty, I easy, thought it was I'm good a pretty too. easy movie critic. I don't get why people crush stuff that it's like it was people. entertaining. It served a purpose. Like it wrapped everything up. Like I, I there it was, was some fine. twist. It was, exactly. It was, it was top five of that movie series. Mm, Rogue One. Well, I don't, uh, Rogue One, yeah, you're going to have to, Rogue One, you're just going to have to take out of the mix. Why? Well, because it's not, wasn't it part in. of that series. Okay. I'll put it in. Maybe it fits it's, maybe in. It's and, 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 and by the way, the, the, um, controversial one that I'll throw in is that a lot of people whose opinions I respect otherwise where Star Wars is concerned is a lot of mixed imi- opinions on Solo, which I thought was pretty good. Solo was good. Solo was fun. Have you I, finished Mandalorian yet? I am three episodes through. Um, Unbelievable. I got I to gotta ramp it up a little bit there. But um, I will say about the, the new Star Wars, yes, it was completely redundant. And in fact, it felt a lot like in... This age of reboots, like they make a new Hulk movie every three years and a new Spider-Man every, you know, like... Uh, Spider-Man's dead, man, isn't he? No. Oh, mean? I thought, who died? Didn't someone... Oh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will say that, yeah, it felt like, it, like you know, they make a new Spider-Man every four yeah. months or so um, and reboot the thing. This movie, if you kind of, if you blur your eyes a little bit, it basically is like, let's remake Star Wars, but with a female lead instead of Luke. It's basically the exact same move. Sure. However, the thing you have to say is I remember saying to some of my pals in college when they would um, when they would condescend about Full House. Full House is such a lame show. Yeah, you're you're 21, year old guy, frat dude. You're not the target audience. Right. That's exactly it. Hey, 47-year-old man, you ain't the demo not, for Star Wars. The, it's what, for what your they kids. Did, what they my did, kids loved it. The reason that was the, there were the gaps between this is they made the same movies for a different generation. That's it. It's and a, if, you, it's, if you enjoy, if you, I took my took, took two of my kids, they loved it. That's exactly they left the movie right. loving it. They don't. I mean, you know, I've been like, hey, let's sit down and watch Empire Strikes Back. They're like, why? What, what, I don't we need also to, saw I don't need Spies in that. Disguise. Surprisingly good for an animated, mm. uh, for one of, you know, Bad reviews, but uh, pretty good. Anyhow, see, we jumped into that the was, red challenge yeah. flag. Should picks. we sing again? No, no. Spaghetti should, though. Try it one more time, friend. But, to, but, but in tune little, this time. Yeah, right. Red challenge flag picks. <laughs> <laughs> you make me do it acapella. It's, it's unplugged. It's going to happen. I don't know. Just pick All right, let's games. start off. Okay, let's just put, let's let's start with the games that are happening. Yes, we'll pick them right. red challenge we'll flag style. Tune yeah, your we... ears in here. Um, there, uh, Andrew Raby, and uh, write these down. Here we go. Three ways you jump into here, Spaghetti. He's probably spending all his time thinking about what's the mean thing he can say about me in his tweet. As is uh, one of sports' most ancient customs, the Houston Texans host the first uh, playoff yes, game they on do. Wild Card Weekend. The Buffalo Bills are paying a visit this time around. Handsome Hank. <sighs> Choose. I, much as I love the Houston Texans, and I really love Deshaun Watson, I like, and they, in theory, have all the pieces and, as you point out, the experience. I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills here. I'm going to drop the red challenge. I would theoretically throw up, but I'm behind the glass. Really? You're taking yeah, you the Texans? Throw. Okay. Texans are home. I mean, I know I don't know how healthy J.J. Watt's going to be, but he's still a body. I, don't, I, don't think, I think that I don't will think be J- worth something yeah, in the I initial minutes of the game. I don't, I don't think game. J.J. Watt's going to play any part in this game. The, I, mean, I, I think, think it'll jack the audience field, up. But, yeah, and oh, sure. Yeah. The crowd might cheer. But. Texans are just a little more talented. I know Buffalo has some great pieces, but why can't the Texans finally get over the hump and win? Why can't Deshaun Watson be who he was at Clemson and win a game? Um, I think it's a in terms of teams without experience, I, I guess Tennessee is uh, probably a little bit of an easier matchup, but they're home too, and I, I just feel like the Texans are going to squeak this one out. I don't know how far they'll go. They'll win this game. 
I am with I well the reason that uh, the Bills will answer to answer your rhetorical question is um because the Bills maybe have the best defense. The Patriots right. took that mantle for the first half of the season. If you've been paying any attention, though, the last two months, they've gotten exposed a few times, you know, not uh, not the least of which was in their visit down to Houston by Deshaun Watson. But I think that if you buy the sort of simplistic scheming that the Bills are going to do, take away New Hopkins. Well, Trey White allows you to do that. Will Fuller is at best not a hundred percent. So who's 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 Kenny killing Stills, you? But not I mean, right. Yeah, I mean, they're, he's, they're, that, he's gonna Kenny. Right. All right. So Kenny Stills is gonna kill us. All right. Yeah. That's gonna end our season. I don't. You know, I buy that. Um, that it's more likely that the Bills go down there and bang Devin Singletary and Frank Gore and otherwise right. and Josh Allen. Um, on that defense, and they do it. I think that the one thing I will say is, though, to Spaghetti's point, the narrative got a little bit uh, away from De- from Deshaun Watson um, that, you know, he's he remains clutch. Remember what he sure. did against Bama and on the big stage and won 60-minute stretch exactly one year ago hosting the Indianapolis Colts. He didn't play his best game, and then that took the shine off of, oh, he's so look how clutch he is in the big games, but that doesn't disabuse, shouldn't disabuse you of his full body of work. However, I think that that defense is in fact mighty from Buffalo, and they've gotten to rest up for a week and everything else. I think that the Bills go down there and win. Let's put it somewhere in the range of 21-17, I think. Yeah, the, uh, I, I feel like it's a three, four-point game. I, yeah. I just think great defenses still hate these quarterbacks that are in, they, they can improvise. I, think, I mean, that's why the Ravens won, too. He's mobile. He can make plays. I know DeAndre Hopkins will have a hard day, a hard matchup, but he'll still make plays. He's still a top two, three receiver in the league. Uh, if, you, if you're putting Josh Allen versus Deshaun Watson head-to-head on who you're picking to win a big game, I mean, I think it's an obvious answer. Well, we haven't. first of all, we haven't seen Allen in that spot. One, and two... Um, I think that, uh, you know, they the, the Bills just saw Lamar Jackson for what that uh, is worth. You know, they saw him three weeks or so ago. And by the way, I think the Ravens don't want to see the Bills survive this one. And uh, based on, well, let's see if uh, if that's how it shakes out here. With a visit to Foxborough for the, uh, the late game on Saturday, Handsome Hank, Tennessee Titans, world champion New England Patriots, Jeez, I can't believe that this is really a debate, but here we are, and a lot of the cools are picking the Titans to take care of business. Tom Brady's old. Josh McDaniels has a foot out the door. We're speculating that he's only one of the prominent stars of this New England Patriots dynasty who will be moving on. Choose. I mean, obviously my heart is telling me that I should pick the Titans. Mm -hmm. Um, My good friend Ryan Tannehill. Mm-hmm, playing right. quarterback there, right? Playing beautifully at that. Playing beautifully, but I can't. I can't do it. I don't. I just don't see. I. I think it'll be again. I think it'll be. This is a cop out. I think it's going to be like a super close, very tight defensive game. But I think the Patriots will find a way to win it. Man, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. I'm with not you. cool. Exactly. I'm not. I'm gonna cool. take the Patriots here too. I do think I will. I will forecast and say that I am not going to take the Patriots, whoever they get. I, I'm a hundred percent with you. I just don't see them going out in this round. I think they definitely. Uh, get. You can see Spoiler, the signs. I will not be picking them next week. Same as last year. P- Patriots fans in 2019 were quite raw with me, pretty consistently. When I would point out that Sony Michelle and the defense were more relevant to the postseason run a year ago than the goat Tom Brady was, they don't like when I say that. It is a fact, I, and yeah. Rob Gronkowski also played a prominent role there. The Patriots are to be praised, to be lauded once again, because a year after everything in that offense went through Gronkowski in the run game with his blocking and him working those seams endlessly and the mismatches and opening everything else up, the fact that they did what they did this year with old Tom Brady, but a lot of it was, I'm not going to say smoke and mirrors, but it really is comparable in a in, in some way to what the Pittsburgh Steelers did this year, which was just ride this like, oh, our defense isn't just, you know, it isn't just stopping the other team. They're, in fact, taking they the ball score, away and scoring score the ball. Right. Yeah, or putting our uh, – yeah. and they were blocking punts and scooping those up and running them in. The magic has kind of run out, and unless you're picking that to happen, I don't know how far you think the Patriots are going to go here, but I do think they're going to try to run 
Sony Michelle. I think they're going to have a hard time doing that against the Titans is sure. the problem. Now, A.J. Brown is the handful. Do you think uh, Gilmore just eliminates him? I mean, he didn't against Devontae okay. Parker last week. I mean, Go ahead, eliminate time. him. What are you going right. to do about Derrick Henry? The, the, thing, the thing for me, though, when it comes down to is I put a lot of stock into – I don't know. This is one of the things that I hold on to about football is is experience in playoff games. Teams that have experience. You know, there's a lot of teams that can get super hot during the season, be really exciting to watch. And then when it comes up to the playoffs and they play against a Steelers team or a Packers team or a Patriots team that is just, you know, they're in the playoffs every year. A name year. brand team. is what A name brand here. team. It gets to January and those teams are like, oh, we don't do this. I don't know how to play in this month. I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it happens, and that's what I think. That I think that by itself, you, on paper, neutral venue in in November, I'd probably say, yeah, the Titans would win this game. We we've talked a fair bit about what defines irony um, on this okay. show, Not again. and it's funny that we have talked a fair amount about over the last six years or so that it the, the one weird thing about Belichick's coaching resume versus Lombardi, Landry, Noel, Shula, uh, Holmgren, whoever you want to say, Bill Walsh, obviously, maybe most prominent, Bill Parcells, is he had no coaching tree. It's funny that, one, that they have a three seed in part because Bill O'Brien got him in Houston, and now Mike Vrabel can finish well, Also, the that Brian Flores got Got him in, in Miami. Oh, I, I, I mean, can't that, believe it, I skipped or, right in, over in that. England, yeah. I can't. I skipped right Last over weekend. that. weekend. Yeah. So there you go. That 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 Vrabel could do it. I think a little bit too much is being made. Mike Vrabel hasn't been in the Patriots building in in many 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 moons. I don't think he knows the details of what they want to do. But in broad strokes, I think he has some sense of that. And at minimum, does know how to win in the postseason. Yep. To your point, and can um, maybe. But his play. I mean, as much as that, like Greg, I hear you. He, he knows how to do it, but. We got Ryan Tannehill. Never played in a playoff game before. You know, has, generally speaking, there. I almost always will go with you. I think that is one of the one of the lamest cliches. You, I mean, I go against you most of the time on this. I think one of the lamest, untruest cliches is, "Oh, the the savvy vets will take care." Give me uh, more in hockey than in football, but still, it applies here. I'll take the young talent that over over the savvy old vets, you know. I'll, yeah, I will do too. But I think the young but talent, but not, not have in this case. I think grounding. in this one, I think. So. I, I think that's why you know you often hear people predict teams that are going to make the Super Bowl, like, oh, that's a hot young team, and it's like, okay, well, maybe they need one year's grounding in being in the playoffs and losing and understanding what it takes to win in the playoffs. And then the next year they get good. That's why I think a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this as well, you sit in August and you're like, that team looks good. That's a Super Bowl team. And then you realize they don't quite have the experience to do it. I But they but I think what, what can um, offset that for the Titans as I continue to make a case for the Titans, even though I'm taking <laughs> the Patriots, is, the, is just – Raw Braun. Sure. I mean, they, yeah, yeah. And they, that, that that has nothing to do with like, that, ah, this moment's too big for me. But that kind of plays into the – like, Raw Braun, if you want to do that against the Patriots, which would seem like the best way for the Titans to win, given that that's kind of their signature, the Patriots aren't necessarily the team to do that because they'll be like, okay, we can do Raw Braun too. Raw Braun. On a head, that's uh, the like brand of aftershave that Dave wears as well. By the way. <laughs> I don't know how much you <laughs> – I was uh, wondering what that was. This, we had to the, find – I had to apply that This to will somebody. factor in. The Foxborough uh, forecast for Saturday is 93% chance of rain and uh, at game time kickoff. Uh, well, the sun's going down at 427. It feels like 36 degrees outside. That's a gra- uh, that is uh, that is relevant in a lot of games. I'm not sure who not that sure favors ten- yeah. here. If it were colder, I would say that really favors the Titans because I wouldn't want to try to tackle Derrick Henry when it's 10 degrees outside. I just think it's a nightmare zone for them. Coming, the Titans coming into that building, and it's just like you know that Brady's pissed off. And you put AJ Brown's a monster, but you put Gilmore on him. Belichick's like, all right, we're going to stop Henry. How are you going to beat us now? I don't know. I want. If Titans, it's hard to if, take away both those things. Sure, but I mean, if there's one guy who could do it, it's Belichick. And I wish, I wish this game was played in like Los Angeles, neutral site. I mean, I want to pick the Titans so badly, but the other factor is that is legitimate. You talk about the experience and everything else. I don't know how much that building is in tumult right now. Josh McDaniels is interviewing at minimum. Brady, there's noise that he wants to keep playing. Like, is that is there fra- are there fractures in the I, building I, I right now? I think at this po- I think again because of their experience playing. At this I'm point with you. I know. Because I, of I, Belichick, he's not like, hey, let's have a side discussion about what Tom's going to do next year. What do you guys think? I know, but maybe... Did you hear what Damashek know. said about the charges? Do you think that could happen? I oh, don't think that's happening. They're, they're aware. They know what's going. They, they know what Damashek is. They know, they, they'll they tell you otherwise. Oh, yeah. 
Skip on it. face, Belichick that. would do his would, would do his his ever hilarious bit of Joe. I don't want to talk about that. I'm not on Snap Face. I don't want to uh, like all that stuff. But he he knows. He, knows. he hears it. Tom yeah. definitely. Oh, he's listening to this right. Well, now. Tom told me he loved me. You know what? Ten months or so ago, eleven months or so ago. All right, we'll take the Patriots there against my better judgment, and I'll give them to you at twenty four twenty. How's that sound? Yeah, I I could see like. I don't know, 2017. 2017, yeah. Okay. 2120. 20. Now to like, Sunday and the NFC side of things. I don't know if you ever heard, but uh, the Vikings once vanquished the Saints on a miracle play. You'll, you'll, right? You'll probably, you probably I remember, have seen it I remember it a seeing times. that in the NFL 100 I bet show. you're going to see it a thousand times more before kickoff, but uh, let's ignore what happened two years ago in Minnesota and instead focus on what will happen under that dome down in NOLA. Minnesota Vikings, New Orleans Saints, handsome. Hey, why, 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 okay, here I mean, we go. You, you can choose one. No, no, no. Choose one. No, no, no. I don't mind. Eddie spaghetti. Choose. Uh, Saints at home. Uh, don't trust Kirk Cousins yet, uh, and I just think that uh, Mike Thomas has been amazing. Drew Brees has obviously had a really good stretch lately. Uh, I think they're a hungry team, especially because of what happened last week, uh, last uh, last year, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think – I think if we – Hank said they'd be – Spaghetti, fun. you've worked here for a long time, right? You know, you, you, you know understand rules, how right? it goes. You just make you just your say, pick, and then just we say a throw team. the flag. Say a team. I'm giving my two cents quickly, and then you guys will talk no, about no, this No, 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 but minutes. that's not how it works. Last, no, last if, ends, if you disagree. Last ends, Hank said there'll be one there'll be one clunker of a game. I think this is the one. Oh, you think the Saints whip them? Yeah. That's my yeah, that's I did too. prediction. Do you really? I, you know what? It's, mm. it's What's frustrating to me is the I'm Vikings. I'm taking the Saints too. Are we all? Wait, Spaghetti's the only one to throw a flag. He's throwing I a flag. So, okay. The Vikings to me are a team that like I want to believe in everything about exactly. the Vikings. Everything on paper with the exception of Kirk Cousins. And I'm not down on Kirk Cousins. I just don't think he's a top 12 quarterback in the NFL. Mm -hmm. No, he's not. He's like somewhere between 12 and 16. Um, the but middle everything... class among QBs has grown meaty. Right. High, I mean, yes, yeah, guys yeah. who who financially are in the upper class, but but fill the play, middle class exactly. of football. But you know, everything else about them, their defense in theory should be really, really good, but hasn't always put it all together at the same time. I love Dalvin Cook, but he's injured, and I think a shoulder injury for a running back that that is low to the ground and likes to you know break like the way that he does is probably not ideal for him at this time of year their receivers are good but for some reason it hasn't all come together and I probably do lay, lay that at the feet of Kirk Cousins to some extent I, I think in 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 the Superdome I don't know how that's going to be the place that it all comes together and they have the game that they are probably capable of they haven't been unbeatable the Saints this year obviously the Falcons no. even went down there and beat them but but also the other thing for me is the Saints my I've been more down on the Saints than I should be based on their record, in part because I love Alvin Kamara so much, and he, I right. haven't seen Alvin Kamara-type stuff from him. And the last two or three weeks, he's suddenly started to do those kind of things, and that is a huge difference. Spaghetti, who told us mid-season that, um, that the buzz was that maybe this has been a blessing in disguise, and you know that does kind of make sense, that storyline at least, that Drew Brees – this time last year was looking a little dead armed that maybe the the break for him with Teddy Bridgewater and Alvin Kamara has imbued the rest of the roster with confidence that they otherwise we can wouldn't do have. Right. Oh, look, we kept on winning him. Kamara was down and and uh, Breeze was out and all that kind of stuff. I buy. I, I kind of do buy that. Sounds like the kind of thing Maurice would say. Maybe that might be. Could have been. I was going to say either maybe Carr because it was quarterback talk, or it could have been something money heard. It could have been from a it's, it show. Could be, but yeah. Money does not know a coroner down there that tells him all kinds of things. I also think uh, that's true. He does. <laughs> he does. Yes. I, I, I met stories. the man. Uh, yeah, he's stories a, about a lovely coroner. fella. If you ever meet Matt Money Smith, ask him to tell you some stories about coroners in New Orleans. I'm a handsome. There's no stranger to, to, uh, to New the after well. hours of New Orleans himself. But yes, I think that you hit on, and by the way, um, it's not like the backfield is just Alvin Cook, but he is the star. Right. He is the engine sure. of that offense uh, with all respect to Cousins and uh, and the fine receivers. And if he's not 100%, that's the flaw with the Saints right now is that they have injuries on the interior of their defensive front with their stars. And so that's where they can maybe be had, and I think that where they will be had going forward. But this weekend, I think the Saints beat them, but I think it'll be a little bit closer than what you guys are saying. I'm going to say 28-23, home team. Saints, mm. get it. And now let's bring it on home here, handsome. 
the Seattle Seahawks, frankly, not my favorite game. Not sure why it's in the anchor seat of uh, of the wild card weekend because I feel like it's not the it's, hmm. it's really the attrition bowl, isn't it? It is. I think, uh, I mean, if you want to get super deep into why it was placed in there, I think it isn't the anchor. I think Saturday, a Saturday night game. That's the more important is, one. Is the one you can pick up. The People are going to watch but football Cousin on Sal Sundays anyway. Cousin so, Sal knows better about that than I do, and he said that that was the case. I thought that Sunday was the well, most watched. Well, it is. Watched. I think next week, well, it will be. I think it's most watched anyway. So it's like Sunday's football. People are going to show up and watch football anyway. Put a good game on Saturday, then suddenly you bring the audience on Saturday as well. You do better overall. Hmm. He also said that the league prefers to put an outdoor game as the anchor game. I didn't know that either. Did you? Have you heard that? And that's how football's supposed to be played. Dude. Well, of course. I wish you, I there were no domes. Well, domes hell stink. Hell, you talking about? Domes stink. That's when right. Why anybody who invented that should be ashamed of themselves. Exactly. Same person who invented astroturf. For you know. Well, somehow we all laugh about AstroTurf. I think in 100 years we'll look back and say, who was the stinker that domed these things? You know, shameful. Don't you see the, the collective experience of sitting out there? That's right. the buy-in. That's think, why football's better than all the other sports because you're all sitting out there in the elements together. And I the Vikings, of, don't you see the, the advantage you should have had? Because of global warming, I don't think domes will be necessary in about 20 years. They'll probably wow. just take them down. There'll be fires raging. You just have to have a fire retardant stadium and you'll be fine. The most useless thing to do with the dome is to spend the extra three $400 million to make it retractable because no one ever <laughs> no retracts. No one's ever retracted. Why the would they Retractable roof is the dumbest thing. Yeah. Like, it seems like a great thing. It's the same thing as your own automobile. You Oh, should we get the sky? Should we get the sky roof? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Imagine how nice when it's sunny out. We'll just open that thing. Nah, turns out you never really you never use, use that it. thing. Yeah, you Let's open see. it once. Then you never open it again because yeah. why? Wait, the wind gets weird and all that, yeah. especially if you're peppering Blows your hair. all the hair. dust off the back of your head. Right, but not beyond. <laughs> even if you're bald, complete. It doesn't matter. All right, listen. Okay. Let's Seattle pick this Seahawks. game. You know what? No, this I'll one, tell you what you choose. Dude. I'm gonna. You all right, choose. I'll do this one. This one is called the Russell Wilson Bowl because, of course, had the Seattle Seahawks not drafted Russell Wilson in the 2012 draft, it's well known that the Phila- uh, that the Philadelphia Eagles had their eyes on the Russell Wilson prize. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what it is. Instead, no, that's they get fine. Carson but I mean, Wentz, like <sighs> Carson Wentz, looking to etch out a little bit of history himself, some postseason success to make all the locals there forget about one Nick Foles. All right, here we go. Seattle Seahawks, Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going with Russell Wilson. Russell will. uh, Okay, Uh, anybody (laughs) throwing? Anybody throwing? Nobody's not throwing a flag. All right, then I'll explain my side. Okay, my side is quite simply the Eagles. They if they get Lane Johnson back, they're much improved. He might be their Jenga piece, in fact, on offense more than any other receivers are. But they still don't have any receivers. I'm not sure of uh, of Zach Ertz's status for this one. Um, he's not playing, I don't think. He's definitely out for this I don't one. know if he's definitely out, but all, but the, not all gonna... the everything you're hearing is it doesn't sound like Also, he's... you wouldn't – I mean, based on the, you know, the specifics of his career choice, you would think that that injury wouldn't lend itself to getting hit while you're trying right. to have your hands up and catching a football. Um, I think that uh, – I, 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 it comes down to this for me, very simple, is this side of Patrick Mahomes, and even that is a maybe – if I can't tell you, I used to say this about Ben Roethlisberger um, three years ago, but I think Russell Wilson now takes this one, is if I can tell you nothing about the game, not how good the other team's defense is, how good your offense is, what the weather's going to be like, and otherwise, if I only can tell you you get to pick the quarterback and you have to win one game, I think Russell Wilson is the choice. Like I say, maybe you go Mahomes at this point, but outside of that, I, it, Russell Wilson, this is a He's, playoff game. Yeah. Going into Philly, I think I, that exactly. he gets it. I think it's that, and then I think it's, you know, both sides have injuries mounting up at this time of year, and I think that's going to count either team that progresses this week when they play right. against a rested team in the divisional round. But Ultimately, uh, and the, a big problem is going to be the Eagles' offensive line, which is really banged up. And on top of Russell Wilson being able to go and do Russell Wilson type things, I think that the um, the, the the Seahawks defense is going to be able to get after Carson Wentz and stop the running game, and they're just not going to be able to get anything done. I think the I think this is the clunker. I, th- I that's I mine. Is, I think this is a twenty point. It's funny. I was going to give you twenty eight fourteen. That's my pick on this one. 
uh, visiting team, spaghetti. I just think that the Seahawks have to play close games to win. Like they just, they'll. I I wouldn't be shocked if they won like every game in the in the postseason by a combined like ten points. Like it just they're a team mm. that has to keep it close. But I don't think. I, but I think that this time they may just accidentally not keep it close because the Eagles can't score points. I, I was just gonna say I I agree with you in the sense that it, it has the potential to be even more of a clunker than the Saints game because the, the Eagles are just not good. I mean they were a Daniel Jones non fumble away from being in real trouble versus the Giants who are a miserable. That's right. Team. They're not a good team. And uh, the Seahawks, I mean, like, kind of like you were saying, Dave, like, I just don't pick against Russell Wilson. I think they're pretty solid, um, you know, in pretty much all facets. And I, it's a game that it would be shocking if the Seahawks found a way to lose this game. Um, I hear you, the home factor and all that. You know, Carson Wentz deserves praise and all that. But it also gets the, you know, that the, they won those last four. But, you know, Again, I'll, I'll make this about uh, about my team, the Steelers. I, you know, I was just on, and I'm trying to. I want to make sure I give it a uh, a proper shout out here. I was on the um, the Go Birds with uh, Jar Barsh- John Barshand hit me up because I which predict- birds are these? The, there are uh, two sets of birds in You're this right game. about that. Uh, I went on the uh, Go Birds podcast. Go and dig it up there. We do a deep dive on the Eagles, the NFC East, and uh, and various other pro football-related items. Um, good times with John on that one. We also talk about the first couple, Colleen Wolf and uh, John Gonzalez. Um, their, le- their, their meeting is legend. He even knew about that they met in the locker room and all that kind of stuff at the Eagles locker room. Anyhow. I would think at this point, you know, le- legendary couple. I, well, he, he said that they would have to be, uh, be, be number one on that list. Um, the what, what was I going to tell you about uh, the Eagles, though? But anyhow, um, <laughs> that's a well, the, uh, yes. I think that the Seahawks win this one. Oh, that's what I was going to say about the Eagles. The asterisk that – and, you know, it, it's funny the circumstance that surrounds what the Eagles have done versus what the Steelers didn't do. They're basically the same. One game separated – of course, the Eagles got to keep the second overall pick, who they pay a hundred million dollars to, whereas the Steelers had a backup, a, a third string free agent rookie playing quarterback. But you know, they both basically do the same thing, which is they're just both decimated by injury. They, the Eagles, win out their last four after losing to the Miami Dolphins. Then they beat the they beat the three bum teams in their division four times to get the division and finish 9 and 7 whereas the Steelers limp home losing to the Jets which was a bad loss but at the Ravens even with their second string in there no great shame there. But you know, the the Steelers are in that division then oh say oh what a great story. They made the playoffs at 8 and 8 or 9 and 7 as it is. The Ravens went thirteen and three, or thirteen and three, right? Yep. And uh, um, anyhow, so let's not celebrate the Eagles too much as as having accomplished that great uh, feat by beating the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Redskins to to win right. the division. Those are three bad teams. So, with that said, there we go. Let's go through it, handsome okay, well, NFL so UK style. The bracket. How can you find it and play ball? Superbowlchallenge.co.uk. If you're in the UK, okay. Um, um, so here's what you do. So if, if that if if I agree, by the way, so we you and I aligned on all. Are we the in lockstep? Wild, wow. We're in lockstep about the wild card weekend game. So that would mean that the Ravens would host the Bills in the AFC, and the Chiefs would host the Patriots. And then in the NFC, we get a rematch of that wonderful NFC West game. The Niners hosting the Seahawks um, next weekend, Love and it. Love the it. Packers would host the Saints in Green Bay. Snowy. All right, I'll lay. I'll give you mine. Okay. Buffalo goes at Baltimore. I do not think the Bills. I do not think the the um, Ravens would well fancy this that. matchup. Right. I mean, you know, once you get to the division around, you want some cupcake, but they're yeah. not going to get one. Well, um, almost. that's the playoffs. Well, but if you get, I don't. Th- yeah, well, they could draw the. They could conceivably they could the draw the the Texans too. They could also draw the Texans. Yes. And they're the one seed, so they have the most potential. Right. So they could draw the Texans. That is definitely they whipped the Texans, so they definitely would prefer that true, true. coming to town. The Bills gave them a game in Buffalo, a one score game, similar styles, really, if you if you blur your eyes a little bit. Um in this one though, rested and otherwise, I'll take the Ravens, then you go a rematch of the AFC title game in Arrowhead once again. This time I think Mahomes and company 
do get them. They do vanquish it. I don't think it's a small fact factor that Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and all those guys will look across the sidelines and say, like, oh, my God, it's Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, and they beat us last year even though we were better. Yep. Uh, how, how do we get them this year? Well, they beat them a month ago. You beat them so a that, month ago. That you know them. exactly what the recipe is. And Ace. by the way, that 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 game, I, I I was standing on the sideline for a lot of that game, which was fun um, in Foxborough. Were you? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, for that one. The, I thought you were talking yeah, about that. Yeah, for game. that one. You know what was most impressive was watching Frank Clark and the defensive line just manhandle the, the Patriots offensive line and get off to Brady. And that's th- that's the recipe again, and that's what they'll be wanting to prove that they yeah. can do. Yeah, and how about, about, how about, about that Suggs offense, makes which, any plays? Right. Uh, Frank Gore is a, is a marvel, but... Uh, Terrell Suggs is two years older than he is, and he still makes plays, Terrell Suggs. That's crazy. Um, but Suggs and company head to Charm City with a Super Bowl trip on the line. This well, is hold the on. One. Let's get to the NFC. Let's, this, we got to get this one. We got to get to this one. What? Ravens Chiefs. I'm just saying this is the game. Yeah, that's the game we the want. The Patriots are fine and fun. and if that, But let, we, this is what we want. Is, we want Mahomes is, v. L. Jax. Let's get it. And let's, you know, if we're, if we're very honest with ourselves, that sometimes the Super Bowl isn't the best. That's why I was talking about, about this title weekend. This is the one. Weekend. Let's circle that one. There's a that's, game that's like, this is the best game of the season. This is right. the two best teams. Gotta this get it. A, Don't ruin that for us, other teams. Sorry. This I'm is sure what we want. Down. I'm sure they'll lay down for us. Okay, in the NFC then, so we, you'd uh, have... A couple you'd have more beauties, handsome. Niners, Seahawks, which everyone wants to watch again. You can be Me locked too. into that. That's a prime time. That's a that's a Saturday afternoon, or a, I don't know what it is, but it's a good game to, for people to watch. It should be in a good time slot. It's a gem. It's a gem. Who's winning that? I will take in that one the San Francisco 49ers. They should have beaten them the so first time in one, Santa Clara. They go two and one against the Seahawks this Well, I mean, they really. Well, That's but fine. then again, Seahawks really should have won that game in week 17. They should have won that game. And it is, as I say about Russell Wilson, he really is the T1000. There is something that every time, and what's crazy is as the audience, you, I, I always watching the Seahawks, like, Okay, I, I really did. As somebody who picked the Niners in the preseason to win that division, they got to a point where I felt like a weird, reflected sort of relief for them. Like, oh, my prediction is going to be right. Yeah. Good. And it's like, what, what are you thinking? The game's never over with Russell Wilson. They always come back, and it's insane that they get into these games that just by by a history's worth of watching football games, they should be over. They and should yet, be gone, he, done, exactly. Anyhow, I'll take the Niners. How say okay. you? Same. Then New Orleans are, goes very, to Green Bay. Yeah, New Orleans against Green Bay. So they're going into Lambeau Field. The Packers are coming off of a bye week. If anybody the Saints do not play well in this in the cold weather. Well, outdoors. we say that. I, I I kind of agree with that. I think it's a little overstated at this boy point, given how Drew Brees specifically I'm has just played the last couple narrative. years. Narrative. No, I hear it's you. Not. But I but but by the way, the Niners would have been the most negatively impacted directly had they lost that game at Seattle. Obviously, if they were if they had fallen into the wild card muck and mire, but the other one is the Saints. If the Saints if the Saints have home field and Green Bay or otherwise oh, comes a, to that's them, a different story. I mean, if if Breeze has to go up to Lambeau and the weather's cold, who knows what it'll be? I mean, it really is like that is the ultimate difference. You know, the it, the the comfort of their home field advantage and everything that they have there in the dome on that fast track. In the war, you know, climate And I love the secondary, and I love that. Versus the- Lambeau, which is God knows what the weather's going to be yeah. like on that weekend. You know, it, everything, it, it, it couldn't be further away from And in X's and O's, want. I like the secondary of the Packers. And, you know, if, if anybody this side of the Ravens can do a nice job slowing down Michael Thomas, mm-hmm. I'll take the Packers secondary and uh, and their ability to, um, to rush the passer and all that. Yes, in the cold, I'll take the Packers. See, I won't. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take oh. the Saints. Oh. That was all setting it up myself oh. up for, to tell you something different. I, I would that. take the Saints in that scenario. Okay. Um, but, I mean – the, the bottom line is what beauties these games will be, right? If we add one win to the Bills, it's like, ah, the Bills, what have they ever done? And come on, Josh Allen. If they win in Houston, we'll talk – What people will start to buy in a little bit more. So if it's Bills at Ravens, that game by itself is – is that's an underrated good game. But then the rest, if you go New England at Arrowhead – with the stakes there and the recent yep. history there, and then you go new, you go Breeze v. Rogers, both left off the top ten quarterbacks of all time list, both with something to prove. <laughs> Whoever wins that that's game what, that, gets that gets that's jumps what ahead of the other. Yeah, huh? that's what they're that, going to be for the two hundredth years team. They'll be maybe. like, okay, now we can do it. 
You know what, Dave? I'm also throwing it back for this weekend. I've just realized I'm going to be in London for those games, which means watching games at 2 a.m. You're going to have to do it. Oh, of course. I mean, what do you think I'm going to do? Then I'm going back and forth. NFC side, Green Bay Packers at the San Francisco 49ers. A gem in historic terms and in 2020. I will take the San Francisco 49ers to survive that one. Me too. You will. Even though that in my in my scenario they're playing the Saints. Nobody likes the people are so underwhelmed, or it seems like football America is underwhelmed by the number one seed in the NFC. Not damage. I think it's pro- I told you about I, it. yeah. I, don't, I think it's, it's the Jimmy G thing is what it is. Well, I think it's that, and it's also the defense is like a great. Everyone acknowledges this is a great defense, but it doesn't have a big name on it. Like Richard Sherman's the best known name uh, on I, their even defense. that I wouldn't agree with. I know what? Warner isn't a name brand, but well, he's not. I think I mean, he's emerged. He, yeah, but he's not. I mean, like to the Bosa is not yet. They have a lot of high pedigree guys some, in that front some, seven. They've got some high. I completely agree. With you know, they got Armstead. I just they've mean got DeForest Buckner. They got in all terms of where they were are, drafted and otherwise. Right, I mean, not, they're, 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 they're not, not like Rando. They're not the Seahawks of the early part of this decade. Like, wait, what round was that guy? Where, where did he come from? They're not Got kind but of guys. They're not guys that like the average football fan, which is not you. I hear you. Is like, oh, I can't they wait get to see D what Ford, DeForest Buckner does against their interior. I know, but if they get D Ford back and and he gets it going, yikes, man. That yeah. and, and Jimmy Garoppolo, at some point, people have to go back to where we were two years ago about, ago about Jimmy G. Remember when Brady wasn't in for the first four games? Oh, what are the Patriots going to do with Jimmy G? He just wins games all the time. At some point, it has to be relevant that he doesn't lose, right? And And the other thing I'll say about Jimmy G is, in a big spot in his career and to prove himself. And he's had a number of those this season in in big games. How about in Seattle? Is there a tougher environment he's going to face um, on the way to the Super Bowl this year than he just did in Seattle? He was making big-time throws in the second half. And that was not with not at 0-0 and not with a, a small lead in the first half. I'm talking about when the world was coming in around him and uh, like like the walls in uh, in the trash compactor on the Death Star. Like a, when the walls start coming in on you like that, Jimmy G still was stroking throws there, right? Wasn't he? Yeah. No, no, he was – I mean okay. – I just don't think they have enough, to me at least, the reason you're not hearing as much about them is they don't have the name brand quarterback. They don't have the, the big name on the D. It's not J.J. Watt. You know, that's that's what's missing from that team, and that's why I think people are a little bit down on them. Okay, uh, fair enough. And then this is the one I think that does settle it. So whoever you say here, probably you're going to pick to win the Super Bowl. I think it's the Chiefs at the Ravens. Spaghetti, who would you take in that one? That's a Boy, this is a really tough one. I'm still I actually was talking about this with my friends I still think Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL despite what Lamar Jackson has done I think Andy Reid is still a great coach and I was reading stuff that he saved a lot of like of his like schemes and plays for the playoffs and he's just due there's never been a more a coach has been more due than Andy Reid to come up at a big spot and win it uh, and put away all the naysayers and I think Mahomes is just like he's the guy I trust not that Lamar couldn't beat him I think it's very possible I think John Harbaugh's did a great job but it's uh yeah, I think it's. I think this Super Bowl is almost Mahomes and Reed's to lose. That's kind of how I feel. It's funny you say that. I could, I, you know, the thing with the Ravens is, is that they can just pound you into submission. Um, on the other hand, they two. I mean, you know, Styles make the fight. Styles make the fight, as they always say, Frazier and Ali, and and so on. But really. If you think about this, the way the way it went in Arrowhead, I, it almost feels like you know how they say last team that gets the ball is going to win. I think first team that gets the ball. I think in this one, well, it, you just think someone comes out sets the tone. I just think I think if you if you win the coin toss in this uh, in this hypothetical AFC title game, I think you take the ball to start the game because if you jump the other team in this one. Think about if you if, if the Chiefs come out and they jump you with uh, Tyree Kill or something like that, and it's seven nothing, and then you stop the Ravens once and you have to kick the ball back, man, that's going to be a bad spot for for that offense. Conversely, if you just if if the Ravens come out and they grind you for six eight minutes before Mahomes touches the ball, that's going to be a tough spot for him, and he's going to have to drive the team immediately if they're down seven early. He's going to have to drive the team or risk, you know, real peril. But, you know, I think I am going to change. I was going to say the Ravens. I'm going to take the Chiefs because 
I think that it can be cozy and the Ravens can be like, we're up 10 nothing, start of the second quarter, we're dominating this team. And in the blink of an eye, it can just be like, oh, now it's 10-7. Oh, wait, they, they turned the ball over. Now it's 14-10. And that, I, Mahomes has the ability to flip all that stuff in with a couple of, uh, you know, superhuman sure. throws. I'm with you, but I'm still picking, and the, Chiefs I'm still the, picking the Ravens. Okay, it makes sense. Statistics uh, support that. All right. Um, Spaghetti, who's your Super Bowl and who's the winner? I'll do it. So I'm going to go formally Chiefs over Niners. And I like the Chiefs to win it Wait, for their fans. Chiefs over Niners. I've decided this to That's change. not what you wrote down. I know it's not. I've changed it. The Congratulations. Chiefs. I think I. I'll change it again, though. Don't worry. Yeah. I think I weirdly. I think I have the same Super Bowl as you. I will say if somehow the Saints go to Lambeau and, like, crush them, I think people will start to get behind the Saints to be the favorite to win it all. But. I right now I think I'm going to go yeah I'm going to go the, the the Chiefs over this over the 49ers Chiefs over four spaghetti and I in lockstep I'm Ravens good for the Niners. good for and the Chiefs they, I hope they do but what about irony ball I know it we really need to talk about this yeah uh, who's that, irony that feels ball. like the one thing with the Ravens though I feel weird picking against them is because I feel like every fan of the opposing team and even the coaches are like the minute you get them off the field you finally exhale it's like every time Lamar has the ball it's like they could score no matter yeah. what and that's like something like I would never play. exactly it it's could be fourth any and play. seventeen yeah. and and something happens that All alone right. makes me want to almost think about like the Ravens like he may just do it he may just run like through the entire league and win it all but I'm I'm still gonna side with Reed and, and Balms. spaghetti executive decision here for you. As the uh, as the producer of the DDFP here, we've gone on quite a bit. Here. We have, yes. Do you want to do a separate Shecky Awards? We could. Well, it's up to you. We could or do you it. Want to make them a, a a one long marathon show. Handsome Hank. I think separate. I always I think you know like what people love is starting a new show and just being like, whoa, this is exciting. I'm starting something new rather than like. Really? I'm, I mean, not that they'd be saying it, but like I'm an hour and 23 minutes into this show, and now they're going to do the check. Is that right what we're going to do? We're over an hour, so I think if you, want, if you want to do justice to Okay, the show. there you have our hardcore football talk. Now That let's was move. hardcore football talk. That was good. Was I, thought, I thought we all comported ourselves uh, favorably there, and I think we all have something to be proud of. And at the 200th year, I, I hope that this gets a mention from – Bill Belichick's pretty sure. great grandchildren when yeah. they sit around. I'm pretty sure the Steve Belichick will be will will be talking about one of the this. great podcasts. So I really like I'm it. pretty sure the, the history next of time, pro football can't be told without some sound right. from the DDSP on, on yeah. one, two, twenty. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's <laughs> end it there, uh, Eddie Spaghetti, and we'll come right back with the Shecky Awards, the the twenty fifth annual. I don't remember when. I think it's the 29th. 29th annual. All right. We'll be back with the Shecky Awards for you. And uh, if you're only listening for the football, we'll talk to you after the wild card and in front of the divisional round to break those games down for you. Either way, thanks so much, football fans. It's been a thin slice of heaven.